Hi foodies, my name is Tiffany and I am going to be your Pamper Chef consultant tonight while we make fajita bites. So I thought this would be a really fun recipe to do um, and incorporate some grilled chicken, some shredded cheese, and then um, one of our seasonings and some bell peppers. And we've got a lot of um, different variations you can do with this depending on I'm sorry, the um, rubs or spices that you wanna put in there. So I thought it would be a fun thing to do. Plus I think um, my children will eat it and they'll be the ones taste testing it after we do the demonstration tonight. So I do wanna thank you all for um, being here tonight. So I'm gonna jump in and get started. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fillet our chicken breast. This is something that I do every week um, because when I go to the grocery store, I typically get the five pound bag, uh, I'm sorry, the five pound package of chicken that's like, you know, like this big, okay? So um, our local grocery store has it for about $1.79 a pound. So when I walk away with five pounds, I'm paying about $9, $10 for the package. And it seems to me that we go through about that much protein in a couple of days. So um, right now with my husband working out of town and my two active children, this, this is a really easy thing to do that I can prep at any time, whether I'm doing it on like a Sunday afternoon or I'm doing it in the morning um, if I don't have any other obligations during the week and they're away at school. So I love that I can um, do this. And so this is, this is this is my typical routine. I do this all the time. So let me jump in and show you how I do it. I'm going to angle the camera down so you can see um, my hands in the island a little bit easier than actually watching my face because you don't need to see that. All right, so here we go. So let me angle you down. All right, and so um, we've got our chicken here. Now our chicken, um, I bought the pack last week and I froze half of it so that I could um, defrost it today and use it for y'all show. So um, what I typically do is I grab my kitchen shears first. Um, these are our um, shears that have been out forever and ever. We've had a couple of design, redesigns on them, but they now close shut so that they'll stay closed. And I always keep them in the protective covering just in case anybody accidentally grabs them. All right, so I grab our chicken breast. All right, and I kind of look at it and clean it up. So like this little funky tendon that's in there, I usually try to like clean that up and get that out of there. Or I'll clean up the edges here so that I can clean that up and put that aside. All right, so I usually just grab all the chicken breast. So last week I only, I used about half of this chicken and then we have the other half of it left here. And these are really big, okay? That's the thing about buying that package is that um, these are really big breasts. So if you want to grill them like I'm getting ready to do, what will end up happening is that you will dry the chicken out trying to get it cooked all the way through and that's no good to have dried out chicken, right? And you'll charbroil the outside, the inside will still be pink, and nobody is happy. So I'm gonna show you how um, I prepare and get it done. So there I am with my four chicken breasts cleaned and um, cleaned up a little bit with my kitchen shears. So I'm just using my little trash bowl right here to discard the little pieces over to the side. And then I'm gonna move this out of the way so that we can make some room. All right, so my hands are still kind of yucky from chicken um, because I'm gonna do another step. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my closing cut here. So the, this is like two little trampolines in here. So that it's going to line the chicken breast up evenly. Now when this first came out, they showed it with a picture of like grape tomatoes or grapes in here. And I'm like, I'm never gonna use that to cut those. So I'm not, I have no need for this. Um, and then they somebody showed me how to use chicken breast and I love it. Okay, so this is what I do every time. So look how thick this chicken breast is, okay? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set it right in here. I'm gonna grab my piece of forged cutlery. This is my chef's knife, okay? You need a knife that's at least seven or inch, eight inches long. Ladies, this is what seven or eight inches looks like, okay? This is um, a chef's knife from our forged cutlery collection. It's an all, it's a full tang knife, which means it goes all the way through, it's one piece. It's got bolstering here, which means they've added metal to make it very even in your hand. And it's got a nice non-slip grip here. So this is my sticky chicken hand. That's the one I keep touching the chicken with. And then I'm gonna put it right here in the closing cut. I'm gonna line my knife up, okay, right there on the edge. Close the closing cut and this, I'm putting the palm of my hand down on here just because my fingers are kind of sticky. And I'm gonna just jagged motion back and forth and cut my chicken breast all the way through. So now I have filleted my chicken breast Okay, so now it's much thinner and it's gonna be easier for me to grill this than it is for me to do the whole thing. This is gonna grill much faster. Okay, so I'm gonna do all three rather quickly. All right, so here's number two. 
all the way through. Number three. All right, and then the last big one here. Oh, this is even thicker, I think. Set that down there. All right, so some of you may be thinking, ooh, there's chicken all over that. But it's okay, because this is dishwasher safe. So I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna put this all right in my dishwasher. There are holes in the bottom, and then in the top, so it can get all nice and clean once it's in there, okay? So I just put this right in the dishwasher and let it get all cleaned out. All right, so the next step, what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to um, lay my chicken breast flat on my cutting mat here and make one layer, all right? And then let's talk about cookware for a moment um, because I'm gonna use my grill pan. So over here, you'll see my grill pan. Let's see if I can get that in the picture here. All right, so there's my grill pan. Um, we're getting ready to use that. I'm gonna put this on the stove top and get the press warm, and then we're gonna talk about this once I get it on there. All right, because this hand is still dirty. All right, so we're gonna put this on there. I'm gonna show you a little bit of the benefits and features about this piece of cookware once we get this on the stove top. So I'm gonna put this over there so the press can get hot. All right, and then I'm gonna grab a seasoning or two for our chicken. So um, this recipe, um, I use our chipotle rub. All right, so that's one of our seasonings that is in um, the pantry section of our catalog. And you guys are crooked, sorry. Let me angle you up a little bit better here. I turned just so you can see what was going on. So you might be a little, um, awkward there okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna go ahead and use our seasoning here and i'm going to sprinkle it all on one side while it's sitting on my cutting mat all right so this is the routine i do sometimes i season it um with multiple rubs on the chicken or sometimes i'll do um half with one seasoning and half with the other um, because i want to be able to do stuff later in the week so right now i'm going to leave it like this with the seasoning um on one side now guys i'll tell you something I'm not a very good measurer. So I just used the, the rub and I sprinkled it all over and I didn't measure anything, okay? So I just sprinkled it over there. Um, our rubs are nice because they are gluten-free. So if you have any um, issues with that, all of our rubs are gluten-free. So you'll see like the little sticker right there. Um, this is, like I said, the Chipotle rub. I love the Southwest rub. One of our favorite things to do with the Southwest rub is we mix it with equal parts of mayo and sour cream. And so that's what the kids want with this is they're gonna top it, put a little dollop on that after we make our fajita bites. So they absolutely love that. Hey, Natasha, how are you? So, um... We are gonna get this ready. So let's go over to our grill pan. And yes, my hand is still sticky, okay? So I have to touch the chicken one more time and then we'll wash. All right, so come over here to our stove top and let's talk about our cookware. So this is an example of our nonstick cookware. Um, I've got the press down inside um, so that it can get warm. Now, one thing that's a new feature with our cookware is our handles are removable. So it makes it really nice and easy for storage. Think about the saucepans that you can stack up all the saucepans and then put all the handles in, top, in the top. And then that way you're not store, you're storing like a lot less lengthwise. All right, let me put this back on there before it gets too hot. All right, and so I love that. Um, this new um, edition of our nonstick cookware is also dishwasher safe. So I can, once I um, get the chicken out of here and I deglaze my pan a little bit, I'm gonna put the press and the pan in the dishwasher. I'll take the handle off, but I'll put this in the dishwasher for easy cleanup. So that is so nice that I can do that. Another example is this pot right here. So this is the um, new multi-pot. Couple things that I like about this, and I'm only gonna be able to use one hand because this hand is still yucky, is it has a collapsible strainer that fits down inside. So I can push it down one level or I can push it down one more level and say fill that pot up with water and then put your pasta in there that's really awesome um, I have cooked something on the bottom and then steamed veggies on the top which is really cool um, I like that the lid sits in the handle just like that so you guys can see that so you know like when you pull open a handle you need to like add like seasoning or you need to stir it or you're doing like you know something like a soup stew chili something like that and you gotta put the lid somewhere and then the condensation gets everywhere. Well, I love this condensation rolls right down the pan, right into here. So that's fabulous. Also, when you boil your pasta and you were you know, using that strainer, so you could boil it all while the strainer is down inside, then um, 
you know, pull this up to drain it. Or if you needed to, you just want to leave, leave the pot like this. There's a space right here so that you can hold down each side of the pot over your sink and then you'll be able to drain it right here as well. So this is some nice features um, with our new multi-pot and um, actually our cookware, oh sorry, our cookware is gonna be the special for May, which is just one week away. Um, so when you host your own party, whether it's a virtual show or a cooking show where I come to your home, you can pick a piece of cookware at 60% off in May, so that's pretty awesome. All right, so over here with our pan, our pan is getting pretty warm. I can feel the heat about right here. This is the perfect spot when it comes to the grill pan. If I can feel the heat all the way up here, it's too hot. If I have to touch the press, it's not hot enough, but when I can feel the heat about right here, here, this is the magic. All right, so this handle will get hot. The heat will conduct up into the handle because it is metal, okay? Right now, it's not super hot. I can put my hand on it. It's still actually pretty cool to the touch, but the heat is going to continue to conduct, all right? So later on, I'm going to grab this with a heating pad, um, but I wanted you to um, know that, that the heat does go up there. So I'm going to remove this off there just a little bit. Now, here's my sticky hand again. I'm going to grab our chicken. All right, so I'm just bringing over our flexible cutting mat with our chicken that's seasoned, and I'm gonna put it seasoning side down. Remember, there was no oil or anything on here. It was just the rub. All right, so we're gonna put that all down in there. I'm gonna squish as much chicken as I can down in this pan, all right, because I, I'm gonna leave these three for the next round, but I'm gonna do this round first, okay? All right, so the next one I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab our, actually, um, I'm gonna wash this hand. All right, so while that is seasoning side down, we're gonna grab the seasoning again, and I'm gonna season it on this side. All right, so let's add a little bit more seasoning here on this side. We're gonna take our press and put the press down. So we're gonna allow this to sit and cook for a couple of minutes while it's um, on the stove top here. The key is with your grill pan is that it creates a suction. The press suctions down to the protein and so that's how you'll know when it's ready to flip. When it releases up, that's when it's ready to flip. If you try to pull this too early, like right now, it is really suctioned down. It does not want you to touch any of this goodness going on here. So I will honestly tell you, this is an awesome piece to have in your kitchen. I use it so much. A lot of people book their own parties to get this tool specifically because they love the idea of this grill pan. Um, you guys know when you're in Virginia, it can be hot, cold, muggy, or buggy all on the same day. So this is how I get around that is to grill my chicken in the house. And I don't have to worry about what's going on outside in the weather. Because if you had to grill today, you'd be all wet. All right, so we're going to let this sit right there for a minute. All right, so we've got our grill pan going. Now let me show you um, our piece of our... Um, our new stainless steel. So here is our new stainless steel 12 inch skillet. It's beautiful, but look what's in the inside. Whoa, what's that? All right, so there is a non-stick coating in the inside, but enough of the stainless comes through that you still have the same qualities of stainless steel. So I have always been afraid to cook with stainless steel, okay? Until I started using this. We use this all the time now. So I can do chicken, I do sausage, I do eggs, I do bacon. I do a lot of different things in here. I do my taco meat in here, so many different things. It does come with a lid so that it fits nice on there. This is also dishwasher safe. Both our stainless steel and our executive that you see pictured back here, they are all dishwasher safe and all lifetime guarantee and all oven safe. How fun is that? That you've got all those qualities on our Pampered Chef cookware. So that's pretty cool. All right, so what I'm gonna do is set that aside. Let's check on our chicken here. All right, it's still suctioned down pretty well, so we're gonna leave that for a minute, and let's come over here. All right, so over here at our island, we are gonna work a little bit on some other ingredients. All right, so I've got some mayo measured out. This is our measure all cup. This is actually the monthly special for the month of April 2018. Usually this is the one cup. There is a one cup and a two cup. That is the monthly special. You get to pick one of these with a $75 order. So I just pull this base down to the measurement that I need and then measurement all the way up to the top. So there's my mayo ready to go. Um, another thing we need is peppers. So let's talk about um, peppers. 
Um, I was told a long time ago that there are two different kinds of peppers, a four hump pepper and a three hump pepper. And some people like to say that the four humps are females, three humps are males. This is false. All right, that's an old wives tale. They're just peppers. They're not boys, they're not girls, they're peppers. All right, so what we're gonna do next is we are going to do some, um, we're gonna grab our color-coded utility, our color-coded chef's knife, which is part of our collection. Um, that This is a stamped knife where the other one was forged. And I wanna show you a couple different options with our, our um, peppers here. So first off, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, take our pepper and I'm going to just take uh, the top off Okay, and then I'm going to clean it out with our scoop loop. So I love this little guy. This is not a vacuum cleaner belt, okay? This is called the scoop loop. I'm gonna clean out the inside of the pepper and then I'm gonna drag it along the ribs because the ribs add a bitter flavor and then that way I can get all that out. My daughter loves this for cantaloupe. It's cantaloupe, it's fruit season, so she's been using this quite a bit. Um, and you could use it for pumpkins, you could use it for cucumbers, jalapenos, there's all sorts of fun things. So that this side is thinner, this side is thicker. It's a great little tool to have. All right, so first off, the, we're gonna, to make our fajita bites, we need bite-sized pieces, right? So we're gonna use what is called the veggie wedger. All right, so this is great. If you've ever been a soccer mom and had to provide the orange slices for halftime, you would have wanted this. All right, so this is gonna give us six even slices. Anything without a core is great. So think like onion, potato, tomato, pepper, lemons, limes, oranges. We're gonna put it right down there. I line up the handles with the opening on this side. I'm gonna go straight down. And we have six beautiful pieces of pepper. So we're gonna use that um, for part of our fajita bites. All right, and then next piece I wanna show you is the veggie spiralizer. So same thing, I'm gonna clean the inside of the pepper out. All right, take the ribs and the seeds off just like that. All right, and then I'm gonna bring over our veggie spiralizer. So this is a hollow uh, vegetable, right? So with this, we are not going to be able to use on a hollow vegetable our little key that has the spaghetti side and the fettuccine side. So we're just going to use the default blade that is inside all the time. Um, and it's the straight blade that is down inside there. It's kind of hard to see on this video, but I will share a video from YouTube on this. All right, I'm gonna take the pepper, I'm gonna put it hollow side down, and then as I push the plunger piece down, it's gonna go into the pepper. Now, as I rotate, this has very little resistance. So think of things like zoodles, sweet potatoes, onions. This is so fun, okay? I get all the way down and look at that awesome pepper. It is all one piece. That is so fun. Okay, so then I'm gonna take, <coughs> we have a little bit left over, which will happen um, with any vegetable, you have a little bit left over. Let's take a break from our pepper and go check on our chicken. All right, so there is our chicken. I'm going to grab our um, one of our trivets so that I can grab the press. Oh, it lifted really easily this time. I'm going to flip our chicken. and then let it cook on the other side. So even though the press was warm, you still need to um, flip it. What it's doing is it's creating the gravity to push the chicken down onto the grill pan to get the nice grill marks. And then it is cooking it a little bit, but not all the way. So I do flip when I do that. All right, so we'll leave that. Come back over here to our pepper. All right, so we've got our nice, beautiful, long pepper here. And then I wanted to show you the pepper that I've had at home this week. Um, whenever I, um, I'm making one of the egg videos that I showed, I like to do red pepper in my, um, in my eggs in the morning. So you see, I just cut a piece of the red pepper off and I leave the seed ball intact. All right. So that's going to allow the moisture to go into the seed ball so that um, it doesn't go in the pepper. So the pepper doesn't get all slimy. Um, a lot of people like to cut the pepper straight down the middle and only use the bottom half, which is great for when you only need half because then it keeps that seed ball intact. All right, so this is the pepper that I've been using um, at home this week. So I'm gonna set that aside for right now. All right, so then we have this little bit of pepper left over. This is uh, a great way to show you another cutting tool that we have called the quick slice. So if you ever have seen our egg slicer plus, um, it's like that on steroids, all right? So we can do like, think about this, like four or five strawberries in there. 
Um, a nice pizza mozzarella, some fresh tomato, make a caprese salad. So I'm just gonna take the little butt piece of the um, pepper, put it flat down right there, and then I'm gonna line my teeth up and go right through, just like that, okay? So I've got nice pieces of pepper that are all the same size, and let's say I wanted them diced. So I'm just gonna pick them up, turn them the opposite direction, all right? So they're perpendicular to the spacing and the blades go down one more time and I have a beautifully diced red pepper. So I absolutely love that I can do that um, with this little tool right here, okay? So my daughter likes to do that with her strawberries um, when she's taking them to school or if we're using them for um, muffins or on top of dessert, so totally fun. All right, so you can do the same thing, like take the stem out of the top of the pepper and don't, we don't wanna waste that, so we can totally just use that right there, right? And slice and dice it like that. So I actually had some red pepper on my salad tonight for dinner, so then this will get me ready for my lunch tomorrow. All right, so there we just used up the rest of the red pepper and this all goes in the dishwasher. So this all comes apart and goes right in the dishwasher, which is fabulous. All right, so I'm gonna slide this down so we can grab um, I'm not gonna do any fresh herbs tonight, but this a recipe, one of the variations that you can do is to do um, some fresh cilantro, and I would totally suggest doing it in here. So um, let me just see, I'll grab a basil leaf real quick. I got some fresh basil back here, all right? So I'm not gonna eat this because I didn't wash it or anything, and it doesn't call for it in this recipe, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your little ball, it's gonna go down there, you're gonna put your leaves on top, all right? And then you're gonna put your base on, and then when you flip it over, the ball, the purpose of the ball is to push the leaves down into the well. The drier the leaves, the better, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start grinding this. Let's see if I got enough um, leaf in there. There, I can feel it. Yeah, there we go. Um, that one is stuck. There we go, okay, I feel it. All right, so those were just two little leaves. So if you can see, I got them on the base here. So you can see that it can mill your herbs. So like this recipe would be great with some cilantro. All right, but I didn't get any today, so we're gonna be cilantro but you could definitely do some cilantro to put into this. All right, so let me look at our chicken. And I'm gonna grab our chicken so that you can see. Look at these beautiful grill marks, front and back. Now I'm holding it with what I call our, these are our salad choppers. So you'll see me use them backwards, okay? So I like to take these, all right, just like this, and I'm gonna slice and dice that, the chicken when it's hot. So I don't have to wait for it to cool to slice it, but this is great for doing chicken tacos, chicken enchiladas, chicken salad, chicken on my salad. If you wanna do a pork butt, a pork shoulder, um, a pork tenderloin, uh, maybe you're doing a pot roast. But that was one piece of chicken all sliced and diced right there with my salad choppers. I love these. All right, so let me grab our other pieces of chicken now. And then what I'm gonna do is put our other pieces on so they can cook while we slice and dice those. All right, so our last three pieces will go on. I'm really surprised a teenager hasn't come down to see what we're doing because I'm sure he smells food. All right, so we'll put those presses on, get that going. All right, and then I'm gonna slice and dice the rest of the chicken. All right, so here we go, using our salad choppers. So the um, purpose of these was to make like a chopped salad. So you'd put all your items in a bowl and then just chop them up. However, I'd never really used them, again, until another consultant showed me using them on chicken. And I was like, oh my gosh, I need these in my life. Why have they been sitting in my drawer? So I love that we, as Pamper Chef Consultants, are such a sharing group to give each other ideas of other uses for our products so that we can then transfer that knowledge onto you as the customer because we definitely want things that are used in multiple ways. All right, so there, that is the five um, half, you know, the filet breasts that we did um, in there and ready to go. Isn't that beautiful? All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna add a little red pepper here. My children will not be so um, happy about that, but I'm gonna take this red pepper, I'm gonna put it in there, and I'm gonna slice and dice that, all right? So that was one long piece, and now we're gonna break it up into little thin pieces, all right? We're mixing that all in. 
All right, and then next up is we're gonna use our cheese grater. All right, so I never, ever, ever, ever anymore buy block cheese. It all gets grated on this. All right, so tonight we are gonna use a Colby Jack cheese, one of our favorites, that we always have a block of this at home. All right, and so I've got our Colby Jack. I'm gonna open up our package here. We just opened this tonight to have with some dinner. And I just usually hold it by the package and then grate the cheese directly into the bowl that I'm doing. So say you're doing Taco Tuesday, you could you know, have a, um, a bowl of cheese for to top your own tacos. Um, if you're doing Spaghetti Thursday and you need some fresh mozzarella or some Parmesan, um, I do like our fine grater for our Parmesan because it has smaller holes. Um, I do rotate our cheese so that my cheese is even and I don't have like a funky triangle shape. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take our big mix and scraper. These have been out forever and ever. This is the biggest one. I call her Pamela um, because they're my Baywatch babes and this, you know, they're all silicone up top. So if you're familiar with um, Baywatch, this one's Pamela. Okay, she's the biggest. All right, so I'm gonna mix in um, the cheese. So we've got our pepper, we've got our chicken, and this is going to be um, what our fajita bites are made out of. All right, so we are also, once I get this kind of mixed in, gonna add a little mayo. All right, remember I measured out some mayo, and then this will help stick it all together. So if you don't like mayo, you could use a little um, sour cream, cream cheese, Greek yogurt, you know, something like that. You just need something a little sticky um, to stick it all together. I just went on the light end. Um, I didn't put too much mayo in here. It's only about a fourth of a cup, and that was a lot of chicken for a fourth of a cup. So it's not too mayonnaise-y. You can definitely add more um, if you feel like you want it to stick better. Okay, so there is our chicken, cheese, pepper, and mayo mixture with our chipotle seasoning on the chicken. And then what I'm gonna do next, is let me move our pepper out of the way, is we are gonna talk about one more collection from the catalog. We talked about slicing and dicing. We talked about forge cutlery and cookware. So let me tell you about our um, rock crock collection. So I got out my little rock crock stone tonight. This is the rock crock um, grill stone. It is a nice square because it fits perfectly on your grill. But if you notice, it has a black glaze all over it. And right here is the only place you're going to see the stone or the clay exposed that it is inside. This is a ceramic glaze on the outside that is safe up to 752 degrees. Please tell me you're not cooking at your house at 752 degrees, okay? Because that's kind of crazy. You might need a fire extinguisher. Okay, so with this, um, you can do this in all sorts of places. It can go in your oven, in your bro under the broiler, on your stovetop, out on the grill, um, in your microwave, and to clean it up, it all goes in the dishwasher. So this is an awesome um, set, of, uh, an awesome collection from our, our catalog. Um, this is the flat stone. We have the um, four quart Dutch oven that is like a big, it's a, it's a pot. It's like this big. Right now it's in my refrigerator with some food in it. So um, I absolutely love that. So to finish up this recipe, we're going to take our six peppers. You know, we did it. We only did six. So if you were doing this for a group, you would do like three or four peppers at a time and you'd use a bigger um, stone here, but we're just going to do a few right now. And so I'm going to take our, can you guys see that? All right. I'm going to take our um, little scoop here and I'm going to take um, a scoop of our mixture and I'm going to plop it right there on each pepper. Okay. And then I'm going to um, fill all of our peppers up. Now I'm pampered, not perfect. So sometimes the cheese and the chicken get, goes in different places. Um, you guys can't see this at home, but I currently have a four legged animal at my feet waiting for me to drop something. You know, and then I've got two uh, children upstairs that I'm surprised have not come down to get food. Okay, because they've already eaten, but, you know, they smell this going on. All right. Oh, and there's a kitty cat meowing in the other room, too. Okay, so I've got all that mixture on there. This is great if you're trying to not do the chips or the tortilla shells, and you just want to do the vegetable, the chicken, and the cheese. So you just kind of top them like that. And then, um, oh, let me flip our chicken over here that I'm still cooking. ahead and grate a little bit of cheese on top here so that while it is in the oven the cheese will melt all right so 
and I just I should have probably put this in a bowl so that it would I could get it lined up on top just right but you know what guys I'm pampered not perfect you know so I like to say that a lot when I do my shows because you know we all make mistakes and I think that is part of the um the sincerity of my cooking shows is that you guys know I'm kind of real all right, so there are our beautiful pepper bites. I'm gonna put them in the oven just long enough for the cheese to melt. The oven is already preheated and that will give us just a few minutes to talk about a couple other things. All right, so the next two items I wanna talk about is our breakfast buddies. So you may have seen a video earlier about our ceramic egg cooker. Absolutely love this. Can do your little egg omelets, can do individual muffins, individual little cakes. I've eaten um, my instant oatmeal out of here. You can do your, um, just a can of soup. You could do some um, hot tea or hot cocoa. Um, you can do a whole bunch of things in this. So I love the different recipes that we've come up with to go with this. Um, there's a whole spread in the catalog with this baby. Ceramic egg cooker, you're gonna need at least one if not two. I had a customer just buy one for her um, older parents who live in a retirement community and they don't always feel like going down to the dining hall. So she got them one of these so they can make breakfast in, the, in their place. Um, I also love our pancake shaker bottle. You don't need a spoon, you don't need a whisk, a measuring cup, none of that. You just measure right on up depending on what the pictures tell you. It gives you an index so you know. You shake it all up. When your skillet is nice and warm, you pour it on and you've got your perfect little pancakes. So yes, I know that Bisquick has it all. You could cook, put Bisquick in here too, but sometimes all you have, you have all the ingredients, and so all you have to do is just pour them right in there. So it's milk, flour, a little bit of salt, baking powder, sugar, an egg, that gives you six, and then the other side is for 12. It does have regular increments on there, so if you wanna use it for um, a protein shake or a smoothie, I've actually put a half dozen eggs in here and scrambled them too, so that's a really fun tool. So those are two of my favorites um, for the breakfast collection. And then I have to tell you one last tool is my boyfriend. This is Manuel, the manual food processor. So I absolutely love that I can make salsa in this. I can do a dozen eggs. I can make smoothies, all sorts of things. And I just pulse it and it slices and dices. So we could put the pepper in here if we wanted to. Here, I'll have a bit of pepper left over. Let me show you. All right, so I have the last little bit of pepper. I'm just gonna break it in um, three sections real quick, and I'm gonna put that in my manual food processor. All right, line that up. And it doesn't twist, it just sits on, all right? And I'm right-handed, so I put my left here, and then I plunge with my right. All right, just beat it as much as you want, and then there's our pepper, look at that. So that's all of our pepper, smash, um, slice and dice. You can process it as much as you want, all right? Or just do it a few times and just leave it kind of chunky. So um, I love being able to do this with things that I need to like use as a base, like onions and peppers for the base of a sauce, or if I need to do, um, a, sometimes we'll hide broccoli or cauliflower in different um, dishes that we do, and this is a great place to do it, is in one of these. All right, so let me pull out the peppers because they've only had to be in for just a minute while we allowed our um, cheese to melt and our oven was nice and hot so you guys can see it. And there is our fajita bites. The cheese is nicely melted and then you can put a dollop of sour cream on here and the sour cream can be seasoned with one of our other rubs if you want or you can use chipotle if you'd like. But that is our fajita bites just nicely baked on our um, stone. So I thank you all for being on this live video tonight to see how our recipe turned out. Um, I'm sorry you're not here to have one, but I'm gonna thoroughly enjoy this because I just had a little bit of dinner so I could have these for like my second dinner, okay? So, um, if you guys have any questions, please ask them below and I would love to answer them. Um, after the video is done converting, I will go and answer everybody's questions that has them so far. So I thank you so much for tuning in tonight. You guys have a great rest of the week. Bye foodies.